Welcome to another journey of faith and discovery as today we visit the Garden of Gethsemane and the Church of All Nations in the heart of Jerusalem. The Garden of Gethsemane is truly one of the most moving sights on any pilgrim visit. Okay, let's get started. In our Christian faith, the very land helps us to see the riches of the Word. Now, what do I mean by that? Martin Luther's approach to interpreting the Scripture was his belief that Scripture interprets Scripture. Luther believed that the Bible contains all the tools necessary for its proper interpretation. But to take this one step further, if we dare, when we walk in the lands of the Bible, we should look to the very landscape to see if Scripture can gain us an even greater meaning from seeing the geography. There is a reason why the lands of the Bible are called the Fifth Gospel. So today, in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see a stark reminder of what this means. Where are we right now? Well, take a look. As we look up to one side of the valley, we see Mount Moriah, home to the old city, and on the other side of the valley, the majestic Mount of Olives. Now picture this. On one side, we have the resurrection of Jesus, and on the other, his ascension. Both mountains symbolize the divinity of Jesus. But here, in the valley, the lowest point, we encounter the human side of Jesus facing his darkest hour. This is a side of Jesus that the disciples had never fully seen. Yet in this valley, Jesus poured out his depth of agony and dread that fully showed the human side of Jesus being fully God and fully man. So as we visit the Garden of Gethsemane, remember that we are in a valley. We are not at the ascension. We are not at the resurrection. We are not on a mountain. We, with Jesus, are in a low point of agony in the valley. So let the geography, nature, ancient culture, and biblical history enrich our time today. When we bring pilgrims to the Holy Land, we walk down to the Garden of Gethsemane from the exultant time on the Mount of Olives, where we have reflected on the cheering crowd shouting Hosanna and on Christ's triumphant return. But as we descend, our hearts begin to grow heavy with the weight of what we are about to experience. We begin to identify in some small way with what Jesus must have felt. We too have our Garden of Gethsemane times in life. In fact, maybe you are in one today. One of the greatest messages of the Garden of Gethsemane is that Jesus has also been through a valley and he understands. Our journey begins over 2,000 years ago in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Following the Last Supper in Jerusalem, where Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper and revealed that he was about to be betrayed, Jesus and his disciples ascended to the Mount of Olives. It was in the midst of the ancient olive trees of Gethsemane that Jesus sought comfort in prayer on the eve of his betrayal. Before we enter the Garden of Gethsemane, let's first turn left as we come down the hill to visit the stunningly beautiful Church of All Nations, also called the Basilica of the Agony.
This church was built in 1925, but it was built over the remains of a Crusader era church, which was in turn built over the remains of a Byzantine era church. This was built over the rock where they believed that Jesus prayed in agony to his father on the night when he was betrayed. Approaching the church, we are struck by its resplendent facade. This is a testament to both architectural beauty and spiritual reverence. As we look up at the exterior facade, we see, positioned from left to right, the four evangelists, Mark, then Luke, then Matthew, and finally John. In the mosaic, you can see Jesus in the middle with people grieving on one side who recognize Jesus as the Messiah and on the other side, those who rejected him. And above Jesus, you can also see angels sent to comfort the Messiah. When we step into the Church of All Nations, we are struck by how the architect Antonio Barluzzi designed this beautiful church to bring us right into the experience of Jesus in his agonizing night in Gethsemane. The church is intentionally dimly lit with blue stained glass windows to represent the darkness of the night, both literally and spiritually. Our gaze is drawn toward the central nave, flanked by rows of majestic columns adorned with intricate capitals. As we look up, we see celestial designs reminding us of the darkness of the night and the vast void it must have felt like to be down in Gethsemane while the glories of heaven seemed so distant to Jesus that night. As we continue to gaze around the church of all nations in reverence, we see exquisite mosaics depicting scenes from the life of Christ, reminding us of both Jesus' night in Gethsemane and his humanity, but also his divinity and our focal point of reverential worship. Then, as we look forward at the heart of the church, we see it there, the rock of agony, and our hearts are deeply moved. Quite often, people kneel, pray, and weep. This is traditionally believed to be the very spot where Jesus knelt in fervent prayer on the night of his betrayal. But of course, we can't know that this is the exact spot now 2,000 years later, but it's a very ancient tradition. And at the very least, it is a wonderful place to quietly pause, kneel, pray, and enter the suffering heart of Jesus on that night. As we exit the church and walk to the Garden of Gethsemane, Let's remember the moving words spoken by Jesus to his disciples. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. In this sacred garden, Jesus confronted the weight of humanity's sins, ultimately surrendering to his Father's will. The name Gethsemane comes from the Aramaic or Hebrew that means oil press. Excavations have unearthed ancient oil presses here. This makes sense because we are in the midst of olive groves and the olive oil industry was one of the largest industries in Israel at that time. 
What a fitting place for Jesus to feel crushed by the weight of humanity's sins and what lay before him, just as an olive press crushes olives to extract the precious oil. Now let's cross the street to the more private and locked up area of the Garden of Gethsemane. Most pilgrim groups don't visit this area, but it's one of the most powerful and peaceful places to take time to meditate on Christ's agony and his identification with our own Gethsemane times of life. As we walk among the ancient olive trees, some have said that they believe them to be as old as the time of Jesus. While they're probably not 2,000 years old, many believe that they may be 1,000 years old, so at the very least would be grandchildren to the trees that once surrounded Jesus in his time of agony. To close this tour of the Garden of Gethsemane, let's take a quiet moment now to visit this garden and to ponder on what Jesus experienced as I read from Matthew chapter 26. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Pray this virtual tour to the Garden of Gethsemane and the Church of All Nations was an encouragement to you, a true blessing. As you understand that Christ entered into your own Gethsemane, you are not alone. Until we meet again on this sacred journey on a future episode, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen.